Hey everyone, this is More Than Just Trucks, a podcast for gearheads, truckers, and anyone who wants to learn more about the trucking industry. This podcast is sponsored by Truck Country and Stoops Freightliner. Come along with me as we dive deeper into what makes this $700 billion industry an essential part of all our lives. Here, we will interview industry leaders, educators, and more as we aim to inform the population on all things trucking. Hello and welcome to More Than Just Trucks podcast. And in recognition of this week's National Apprenticeship Week, I have two of our very own apprenticeships with us, some technicians. I have Caesar and Trey with us and also in my office here. I've got my lovely assistant, Jolene. Uh, As I joke and I've said in, I think, multiple podcasts, the other woman in my life that tells me where to go and what to do. So again, welcome everybody to the show today. And uh, so Caesar, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself as far as being an apprentice. Where where you work, uh, what location are you at? Uh, Currently located at North Chicago location. Started started in March, got into the apprentice program September. Now I've been living the dream here. Living the dream. I like that. I don't know if I've heard that one yet. Love it. All right, Trey. Uh, yeah, so I work out of the Dubuque location, uh, started around August and, um, been here for a year and I've loved every second of being in the program. So, so again, we got a year tech with us and then kind of a newbie living the dream already. So i cut now I'm going to just, I'm tagged you, man. You're newbie. Yeah. Newbie. So like, when you said living the dream, what it what's what is it that you like? What what got you into the industry? What made you want to kind of come into to the diesel side of it, or let alone truck country? Uh, I like automotive. I like wrenching on stuff. Been doing it for a lot of my life, just breaking stuff and rebuilding it. And just the knowledge, I think, is my favorite thing of learning. Just knowing how to do it without having to um, rely on other people when they're not there. Yeah. So. Literally a lot of zip ties and duct tape work in the background. Are you so were you YouTube certified prior to this? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What Dre, were you YouTube certified? Yeah, YouTube and Chris Fix on YouTube. Okay. If I didn't have him, I wouldn't wouldn't have any of my vehicles around me. All right. Yeah. So it's right. Joe and I hear that all the time. Like we're like we love the training, but heard it from some instructors also that they're like, Oh, that's not what I saw uh so and so do on YouTube. And it's like Okay, so that's kind of a kind of a running joke in the training side of it that you're, you know, we're going to take you from the YouTube certified to an OEM Freightliner certified technician. Cool. So, Caesar being new, literally you're in module four, six, right? Six, I think that module six. So you're in there doing PDI, UTIs, yep. and stuff like that. So. How long have you been on the shop floor prior to coming into the program, the apprenticeship program? Uh, just around three months, exactly. Okay, so three months out on the shop floor. Yep. Now, you guys, if I'm not mistaken, you guys have a coach, yeah, right, that you work with? Designated, designated coaches. Yeah. yeah, so again, to all the listeners, this is a good thing. Um, if you're thinking about a program, an apprenticeship program, this is a registered Department of Labor apprenticeship program for diesel mechanics, trucks, and buses. So it's out there for anybody to use and share. It's, you know, very detailed out there. The cool thing that I think we've done fairly well with is we put a coaching program together so that these new guys come up through the ranks and they've got somebody to lean on. How important do you feel that is? Very important. Without it, deer and headlights all the way. Okay. Dre? Yeah, I I think it's huge just uh. You know, you, you go up and you get a bigger job that maybe you haven't done before. Maybe you've helped with it, but still have questions. And just having that, you know, extra help in hand just to guide you along is, you know, it's it's really what you need to succeed and, you know, just grow as a tech. The more you know is is the better. So would you say it's a confidence builder or booster? Yes. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Without it, you just doubt yourself too much with bigger jobs that they may want you to give an opportunity to try. Yeah. Do you guys like that where they kind of give you like something? Hey, I'm I've seen it, I've read about it, I've learned about it, but I haven't done it yet. Do you like that when they throw that kind of stuff at you? Yes. Yeah. See, that's the thing that I think technicians really that's what makes us tax, right? Is 
give me something that I can do with my hands, challenge me with it, and let me succeed from there, right? So you guys both know that, you know, we all start from the ground up. So from pushing broom to uh, diagnostic tech to pulling up codes. and But the cool thing for me is building that confidence, watching you guys grow, building that confidence. And then I don't know if you guys have had the chance yet, and tell me if you have, like when you see a truck that's been in and out of your shop and you know you've worked on it, how cool is it though to turn around and think to yourself or say to somebody with a little bit of bragging rights, Hey, by the way, I fixed that truck. That's going down the road. Right. It was in the shop last. Yeah. So Trey, what do you think you've been in a little over a year now, how long prior to you coming into the apprenticeship program, were you on the shop floor and what got you into it? Uh, I wasn't on the shop floor for maybe a month, two months. And well, really what got me into it was I was looking for a program like this coming out of high school. I knew I wanted to do that. I grew up my whole life working on, you know, tractors, anything on the farm that was broken. And I, uh, I actually went up to a couple of different places and I liked them, but I wasn't really impressed. And I got here and it was just, you know, this big facility, you got, you know, all these different engines and stands and all sorts of things you can play with. And it just seemed like, you know, you really had everything all together. And I just, I'm a clean person. And I, I thought this place was super clean and I just thought this would be a good place to work and start out. So good. Cool. So farming background then? Yeah. Yep. Caesar, what, what do you got for a background? Really? Anything? Uh, did landscaping. Landscaping? Did the engines on landscaping engine, so okay. Honda's and Yamaha engines. So it's kind of cool then, because for you, Trey, it's kind of like almost a gimme, right? It's like, that's the direction. And for you, it's even cooler because it's like, hey, you know, yeah, I come from landscaping. I I worked on maybe some small engines or whatever and stuff, but I, I like getting my hands involved. That Joe, you got any... Yeah, so I'm really curious, Caesar. Um, how did you come to be apply with Truck Country? Did you know about the program before you looked at Truck Country, or did you find out about the program after you were hired? Tell me a little bit about that. A little bit of all of it. Um, I know my 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 manager's uh, nephew. Him and I are friends. So okay, he told me about it and recommended me. Oh, true, it. right? Yeah. Okay. So he had been hounding me about it. It's like, hey, you got to check it out. Good. Something that's worth looking at. Awesome. And, finally did it and I think it's the smartest Good. decision I've made so far in my 20s. And I appreciate you staying for open house last night and interacting with the visitors. I, I was super impressed by that. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So to our listeners there, uh, we had our open house last night. We had approximately 30 attendees come through and some school kids that were very interested came through with their parents and uh, some guys stepped up and stuck around and advertised and marketed the program for us a little bit so trey so far year and a half in what do you think is the what's the best thing that you've learned so far i'd say the best thing i've learned is is not so much like the material but it's like actually being able to work through what i'm doing if that makes sense like being able to i don't know like like you start a job and you're not so sure what's going on, but it's, I I've learned here that you can't get frustrated. You just, if you go by the book and you take your steps and take it slow, you'll eventually come up with the answer. And I think that's been really something that I've loved here is just being able to figure things out. If if you haven't heard any of us old timers with the little sayings that we all say is patience is a virtue it's definitely in our line of business that you need some patience. And I think what you're trying to say is that knowing and understanding the jobs, right? Right. Yeah. Caesar, what do you think? What's the, what's the best takeaway so far being in, you know, literally in, you know, a sixth module, which is what a couple months, maybe at the most time frame from start to finish. For me, it's things will go wrong. You can't, can't let that beat you up. Just sometimes you'll get a job and you'll break things and, it's very unmotivating, but after you get it done and you fix it, it's very relieving at the end. Like, you know what? If Good. I didn't panic during this, I could have been smoother. Yeah. Learning experience. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So, Trey, like I said, your year and a half, you've gone from Todd, our lead instructor. Caesar, you're with Todd currently, kind of going through that first six months of 
uh, fired up to the heavy duty course and you're in electronics now. How, uh, how well are you looking forward to what's you like electrics? I do. And I don't, there's, there's simple circuits. I love doing, I love messing around, but once we start getting into complicated stuff, I'm kinda, it, it, I haven't it, learned that process. Yet. It's going to, it's going to get more in depth. Yes. Trey, what do you think? What do you like the electrical side of it? So co- coming into this, coming from like, you know, farming stuff, there wasn't a whole lot of electric stuff I dealt with. So like coming into it, I was, I was kind of excited knowing just like, okay, I'm going to learn something new and honestly, j- just doing it and finally kind of understanding better of how these systems work, especially on this, on these newer trucks is just, it's been really fun. I'm loving it so far. So, and you've got Steve for an instructor this yeah. time around, right? And you probably have him for a few more going through. So that's the thing, right? Is the not knowing and understanding, I think. And that's where the training side of it and the concept is different. Like, did you think there was a question for both of you? Do you think there was that much training involved to learn how to fix a truck? No. See, and that's that's a huge thing that I think we hear at the training center a lot from the high school students. They're like, oh, yeah, it's nuts and bolts. It's, you know, it's grease and oil. And it's like, oh, no, there's there's much more to it than that. And like I said, you're in one of the first electrical classes that is just going to go into depth five miles even deeper than what you can imagine. And so you got something to look forward to yeah, <laughs> if, if you're into the electrical. The, yeah. the thing is that to your point is like, right you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get, you know, unmotivated at times. And I like that. That's a good way to put at it. But um, I think achieving the end goal of knowing and understanding saying, okay, Hey, cool. I get that now. Right. Is probably the best thing that we as instructors and the team love seeing you guys turn around and say, when that light bulb goes off, it's like, Oh, that's kind of cool. I get that now. So um, back in the shop, have you guys been able to, especially you, Trey being in a little bit longer uh, and Caesar, have you guys been able to take some of this stuff back in and, you know, use it, which I'm sure you have, right? right? I've even heard some of our TTP guys, like, I think it was Brandon out of your store where other guys in traditional path and stuff, because we really push the, and we joke, but about looking it up, right. Finding that information. We, we joke, but yet we're very serious about you got to know the information first, but do you guys find yourself as a go-to guy sometimes even being in our program? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I know just, just having that information that like we were taught how to find that here, that that's so helpful. And I know that there'll be times where maybe you and another tech are on the same job and you, you find yourself going through that information and it, and it ends up helping you more than you could even imagine so i think it's just super important yeah caesar same thing yeah for me uh especially because i'm around a lot of trainings back at the shop and there's a lot of times where i'll say things in my story and they'll, they'll look at me like where'd you get that from and i'll explain everything that i learned here and it's like you know what it does make a better story and looks a lot better and cleaner yeah good excellent joe got any other questions um, how have the relationships been for you both? I know, you know, more so with Caesar, you're away from home, but you know, how's it like coming into a strange city and meeting all new people? How have those relationships been for both of you? I love it so far. I think I've visited a lot of places, gone to Crystal Crystal uh, Lake Cave. Yep, so Crystal Lake Cave. Done that. I've took gone, took a lot of pictures of every mural around the downtown. Yeah, downtown they've done a lot yeah. here yeah, in Dubuque. Really- Spiced it out nice. There's a lot of places. Yeah. It's very pretty. Yeah. Great. I, um, I, I've met so many people here that are, I consider to be really, really good friends now. And I just think the, the relationships you build here just, it seems that it's so, um, everybody kind of just has this common ground and you, you just really feel connected to everybody. And that's what I feels like a family here. And that's what I really like about it. So. That's cool. Well, like I said, I, we were talking earlier before we got the podcast started. I kind of give the big dad speech about everybody coming here and this isn't a vacation or anything. Um, and that when when our apprenticeships come in for orientation, they all sit down from all the locations, 15 different dealerships at times, right? And they're sitting there kind of, I mean, 
Caesar, how old are you? 22. Now. 20, you're eight. How old are you, Trey? 19. 19. So we've got young. We've got in our last startup, we've got an 18 year old to 52 year old, but yep. nobody knows each other, right? You come in from different, all these different locations and you're sitting there not knowing each other. Most of you probably will stay at, at a the hotel together and stuff. But again, to your guys' point, the cool thing is that I always say is here you sit today, not knowing each other, kind of quiet and like a little skittish, right? And then in two weeks, you all have nicknames for each other. Do you, you got a nickname yet, Trey? I don't know, but we we do call Andrew in my class Big Kitty. Okay. So all right. Caesar? I don't have one personally, but we have a lot of nicknames going around. You got a, okay. See, so we need to find two nicknames. Got yep. it. Well, he, I got <laughs> one already. I tagged him with Newbie. That's yep. The, newbie the rock star. There you go. But I do, one thing I do like is us getting to know each other felt very natural, not necessarily forced. Good. Well, there's a common goal, right? And it's here to learn and, and kind of get that career path going for you guys right in the beginning. So that is cool to hear, though, like a family, a common goal. like, And that's the one thing that I got to say that I think we do well here at the training department is bring people together. So it's not just the technical training that we're striving to do, if you guys haven't noticed in the background. It's like, OK, so we want a professional, very good employee back at the dealerships right so it's not just like oh yeah the guys go there for training well it's not just the technical training that they're here for we beat you guys up if you're running a little bit late right so if you're late who gets donuts the rest of the class rest of the class right so uh to the point like that stay off your phones all the good things right is like i said it my typical speech is that it's not a place for vacation to get away from work. It literally is here to have a work in, or a training environment. But to the same point is how can we keep it friendly and upbeat and family orientated and, and have that common goal of like, so we do some of those team building, I call them team building, but really it's just a, a get together, right. Is where we can take off. We've done some bowling nights, hockey nights, barbecues, whatever else be the case. So, um, I think that works really well for, for the teams too. So Caesar, if you had one thing to say to somebody thinking about the career and looking at tech schools, um, trade schools, colleges, what would you give them for advice? I look at what every program has to offer to you. Some will offer about the same thing, different companies, but I feel like truck country will, has offered a lot more. And just training wise, it feels like a lot more professional and experienced. Nice. Trey, what would you suggest? I I'd say do the same thing. Go, go around and look around it and, and see what kind of environment you want to be in to start with. And then, you know, just 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 look at what they're gonna teach you and and uh how everybody kind of uh puts themselves out there and then go, go from there, just go with your gut. But I think here I I had the best feeling and th that's what I went with. And I, I loved it. So if, if I could give as a manager's recommendation to anybody, the listeners wise, and I've said this before for some interviewees is do your homework on the company that you want to go to work for. Right. And especially if they have an apprenticeship program. So to our listeners, if you're not familiar with our apprenticeship program is it is an agreement between the employee and truck country or stoops, our company, and the agreement is to stay with us working for three years. But within those three years, we'll give you 27 weeks of training modules. And you'll come out of there with a Department of Labor registered apprenticeship certificate, along with an expert level Freightliner certificate. The cool thing that I like is, and I'll back up to kind of the beginning, is where Caesar talked about having that coach at the, at the shop floor. So when you come to training for us versus a tech school or anything, there is no tuition fee. You're paid kind of earn as earn as you learn type concept, right? And we we call it growing our own. So you're paid in full, meals, hotel, all of all of the travel, anything expensed wise really is, you know, covered by the company. And uh, you know, if you wanted to compare apples to apples, I mean, there are some very good trade schools out there, tech schools. I'm a I'm an Ohio diesel tech graduate myself, and uh Shout out to those guys because I think they do a great job. 
um, from what I'm even watching and seeing and, and watching social media on those guys. You have UTI out there that's got a finish first add-on with, with Freightliner. So really it is up to the individual of where you want to go and what you want to do. Uh, definitely look us up and we can be looked uh, and contacted by truckcountry.com or you can reach out to me, Ray Clark, all one word at truckcountry.com. That's Ray Clark at truckcountry.com. And any closing statements? We'll wrap things up. It was a great conversation with you guys. So thank you for that. Anything you want to add at all, Caesar, Trey? It's worth it. It's worth it. Thanks, nice. Worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Three years seems scary, but what you learn is, is great. Good comment. So on that note, right, is were you nervous about the three years? Uh, yeah. Just like three years, that's a lot. It's a lot of time of your life. But you okay. Look at it from a larger scope. Trey, what do you think? I think, yeah, I mean, c- coming into it, you know, you're, you're like, wow, three years. and But I, I've already been in this for a year, and it, it feels like it's been, you know, maybe two months. So, I mean, this is, I, I think it's gone great. And I advise anybody that's on the edge about it, just maybe go for a leap and try it. Yeah. So. It's funny that you guys both say that, and that's why I'm glad you brought that in. I didn't want to. My son, 18 years old, had that same thought and feeling, right? Like, oh, my God, three years. That's like, that's like, man, I'll be gray haired or something by then. Right. And it's like you try to explain to these guys or you guys like I'm telling you three years. And I know it's hard to comprehend. Like you just imagine like you're probably looking back at high school days. Right. And it's like, oh, man, three years of my high school felt like it was forever. It goes by really, really fast. Like you said, Trey, all, already you're in what, year, year and a half, right? right? You're into it. You're going it. And next thing you know, you'll be in year two and you'll be in year one finishing, you know, your pro level coming into year two and shit. So it's like it goes by faster than you think. So, again, to the to those that think that, my God, there's a three-year commitment to somebody. Well, there is. But I mean, honestly, that's kind of part of life and committing to a job in general. Like we want people to make sure and acknowledge that prior to making that agreement, is this the path I want to take, right? Does it feel beneficial on one side and not the other as well? I think both parties are equally beneficial. Yes, exactly. Right. So we as a company benefit from training you guys to be good techs and be productive. You guys benefit by having more money in your pocket with certifications and growth in the career plan, right? And again, to both of you guys, knowing and seeing within the company that the technician role isn't just the end of your career path. We've got service managers, fixed ops managers, general managers, VPs that have all made it through the ranks with us. So for me, that's a cool thing that I think some people, when you're on the tech floor, you're like, ah, we're, you know, I'm just, am I going to retire out of here as a, as a wrench guy? Right. So trainers, could one of you two, both of you guys be the next trainers in years to come, right? Mm-hmm. With, with knowledge and stuff. So I thank you guys both for your time today. And uh, we'll catch our listeners on the next More Than Just Trucks podcast. Sponsored by Truck Country Stoops, we are one of the largest family-owned and operated Freightliner dealerships in the U.S. today. So check us out. And again, thank you, listeners. <laughs>